Once again, gas prices in California are going way up, jumping 30 cents in just the past week. A spike in gas prices as drivers feeling the pinch at the pump again. It never fails to amaze me how little the public knows about this product. Los Angeles, so of course, I buy gas. And in 2015, gas prices in California were higher than usual. Instead of trying to understand why, I just kept my head down and my nozzle pumping. Did anyone know what was behind the price spike? Do you know why your gas price changes from day to day? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. What do you think it could be? Uh, the, the economy. So why is the price of gasoline up? So high here in California? <laughs> you tell me. Why am I interested now? Tom Steyer thinks the numbers don't add up, and I want to know why. The oil companies have argued that they're spending all this money on environmental refining, but then they went to their shareholders and said, we made 11 times more money this year than last year. How did you make 11 times more money? The people who are paying the, co the extra cost, which was $5 billion, that's working people driving to work, leaving a whole bunch of the money that they should be making at work at the gas station just getting to work. They're so powerful, no one really challenges them. Which reminds me, um, could I have like $20 for gas money? California oil refiners made record profits in 2015. That same year, we paid record prices, and often. How often do you pump? Once a week, sometimes Can... twice a week. Yeah. Sometimes three times. <laughs> sometimes three, three times, times. yeah. Ah. My needs need to be met, yes. First thing Monday? Pump first thing Wednesday, pump Friday, that gets me through the weekend, and I'm back at her again Monday. This is a pumper! Meanwhile, the price of crude oil fell consistently all year, and some cities were paying under $2 per gallon. So why weren't we benefiting from low crude prices like the rest of the country? Hopefully, Cody Rosenfield at Consumer Watchdog can enlighten me. How does the gas price here, as a result of those things, compare to, let's say, Milwaukee, or Minneapolis, or Miami, or other cities that begin with an M. Carb gasoline is a special type of gasoline we have in California. It's the cleanest gasoline in the country. California has had some of the worst air in the country for, for years. It's a lot better now because of the special gasoline that doesn't pollute as much. It costs a little bit more, maybe 10 cents more to make. Oil companies blame it for gas prices. They need a scapegoat when they're making billions of dollars in California, and it's just profit. And is that where the term gas island comes from? We can't really import gasoline easily. So the, it's an island in that these people control everything about it. Why are gas prices so high in California? And people are like, Mah. If you take the media's normal response, it's that it has to do with the price of crude oil and what's going on in the Middle East. Um, but in California, it's actually price manipulation. Um, yeah. And there's a false shortage being created. The rest of the country keeps about 18 days of supply of gasoline. And in California, we keep more like seven or 10 days of supply because literally having low supply in the state leads to higher prices. So what happens is if you have one refiner go out, it causes a huge crisis. Chevron and Tesoro each have two California refineries and control more than half of the state's supply. When one of their refineries or any California refinery goes down for maintenance or an accident, their other refineries make a fortune. And this is what happened in February. ExxonMobil's Torrance refinery experienced an explosion and has operated at less than 20% of capacity since. If a refinery goes down, less fuel is being produced for market and the value increases. But if we know that California refineries keep low supply, are they setting us up for these price spikes? It's time to talk to an insider. Tim Hamilton has been in the gasoline industry for over 40 years. He thinks something's up too. Gasoline today is made in different refineries that all goes into a single big large tank. What Tim's telling me is that all the refineries in California are producing the same base gasoline, and it all flows together into the same tanks where trucks pick it up and take it to gas stations. If these competing refineries send the same product into the same place, then when one refinery goes down, everyone is short on supply and they make a fortune on us. You're kind of stuck. That's why people think of it as a utility. 
It's something that's necessary for their lives, yet at the same token, it's utilized for the maximum profit potential of those who hold it. It's an issue that, that, that many people believe we get into wars over. I think the industry has an obligation to be candid and honest with the public. It is a product that's privately owned, yet influences our domestic politics, way of life, and foreign affairs. And the public seems to know almost nothing about it, but is willing to pay almost any price for it. Nobody cares because you have to have it. Ten dollars, two dollars, I have to have it. You just feel like the gas companies can get whatever they want? Real estate, man, pumping it up is definitely part of being American. So how is the industry regulated? To find out, I visited Gordon Shremp at the California Energy Commission, which monitors the gasoline market but lacks the power to effectively regulate it. There aren't any restrictions, so if you think about the refineries in California, they're not California refineries, they're more refineries operating in California. But there's no, they're not required to supply this market, and they're not prohibited from exporting by pipeline or, or marine vessel. So oil companies aren't required to keep a certain amount of supply, they're not restricted from exporting when we have low supply, and the pricing strategy is murky. What do we do about this? Oil industry critics are calling on the state to subpoena oil executives to explain how gas prices are set and to look into boosting oil reserves. You believe that the California motorist is being gouged by the oil industry. So we're asking, how is that possible? And can we get transparency to understand how they're pricing their product, what kind of inventories they're keeping, and why it is that we're paying up to a billion dollars a month more than, the, than we would if we paid the national average. Shouldn't we all be demanding transparency? On their quarterly investor calls, oil companies brag about record profits. These calls are open to the public, so they use jargon to downplay earnings. Cody Rosenfield listens in, and I'm gonna help him translate. I always describe these as, it's like you're watching a rap video, people bragging about how much money they have. Well, we like the West Coast this quarter. It feels like money, 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 That's money. exactly right. Is that right? Yes. In California, crack spreads have improved related to unplanned and planned refinery maintenance. Crack spreads have improved? Crack spread is the difference between what you pay for crude oil and how much you get for gasoline. Got so it. it's basically your profit. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Guys, we made a lot of money. That's exactly right. Margin in increased earnings by $435 million, driven by unplanned industry downtime and tight product supply on the West Coast. Skrilla. Banknotes raining from the sky. This is my favorite game. <laughs> this is my favorite. Now do you want transparency? This episode raised some serious questions. Please click below to see what we can do together to take action. Next time on Spotlight. These refineries, these, you know, these coal companies, let's make sure that they are paying for the pollution they put into the air. So the question is, why are their representatives not making the fight? Right. <laughs>